You want to save my soul? Is that it, Amy? You stood in front of the desert and you said it makes you feel humble. It takes a fucking desert, does it? I have to take the gas out of my car and put it in the generator so that my mother has enough light to eat. In your country, you keep the lights on all day from our oil and you don't even have the, the decency to sit under them. You come here. You think I don't speak English? You were so keen to use your Arabic you never asked. You think we're all illiterate and on our knees with our long suffering. When you drop your bombs, when your country drops its bombs. It is briefcases that get thrown into the air. My father was on his way to work. I'm a qualified engineer. I am working cleaning shit in a hospital. It takes a desert to make you feel humble. You come here to feel humble. So you can feel the pain of my people. Do you? You feel it. Because you stay awake all night when I am nearly dead. I have to go. I have to go give my mother her supper. There's no one else to look after. My mum always said it was a level playing field to get into Cambridge. Just work hard, man, you get your grades. So I did. I worked really fucking hard and I got the grades. Two eight stars and an A. Everyone told me I deserved to be there. Mum, Randad, my boys, everyone was made up. The local paper even wrote about it. But mum and me spent so long thinking about the destination. We didn't think about what it would be like to actually be there. It ain't easy. It ain't easy being me there. On my first week, one of the other students asked if I'd got there on disadvantage points. That's a thing now, the disadvantage points. Being in care is one of them and having a state education is another. The actual fact of having a state education is seen as a disadvantage. I read that in the university newspaper. I mean, I thought I'd meet other people like me normal but i couldn't find any for weeks it was like they were in hiding i was surrounded by people from private school they all knew each other they weren't doing this alone i'd always thought cambridge was saved for the most special the ones who work the hardest who study the brightest but it's not a level playing field those students knew they were special from the moment their parents started paying for their education. It's drilled into them at school. The confidence to think that what they say matters, that they can do it, they deserve it. Fuck everyone else. You only have to look at the government to see that, right? My first week, I went up to a group. I hadn't realised they all knew each other from school and ski trips. I thought they'd be feeling like me, out of their depth, looking for mates. I went up to them, asked if I could join them. You know the first thing they said? They said they were full. Their friendship group was full. I just thought, fuck you. Sorry, no, I tell a lie. That wasn't the first thing they said to me. The first thing they said was could I clear their plates?
I've had problems with my mum for quite a while. And not just because of my mum. Mum play parts, obviously. But I'm not saying here that I was an angel because obviously I'm not. <laughs> Her boyfriend was getting involved, but even before that. Even before he came into the picture, there was already issues between us. But then that just added to the tension, you know? It made it so... Whatever. I remember the exact day that I left. It was the 8th of January at 7pm. What I left? Well... <laughs> I didn't leave. I got kicked out. And the police got involved, but the police said, if your mum wants you to leave, then you have to leave. But what they didn't know, well, they knew my age, obviously. But they were ignorant to the fact that, even though I'm 17, she can't kick me out. By law, you still have to be with your mum. Well, she used to hit me before, but not now. But shouting. Swearing at me, obviously. There even came a point where my mum said to me, She said to me, I wish I had aborted you. And from that moment on, I said, okay. <laughs> I'm going to stop trying to give a damn. I'm going to stop trying to constantly do things for people. I'm just going to do me. What now? My days are wake up in the morning and I feel absolutely great. I get to do what I want. Every moment I go to college, I sing. I get to do it as part of my course. <laughs> I sing, I dance, I act. I do everything. Uh, do you want me to sing something now? Um, do you know Beyonce? Yeah, I'll sing that. Summer breeze Makes me feel fine Blowing through the jasmines in my mind. That was the song to our first dance. Most women who embark on the terrible bit of lies they call marriage are so wrapped up in the technicalities of having a husband that they very rarely accept the realities of just what that entails. A useless piece of shit starts off as a useful piece of shit before he gets fat and titled and turns into a cunt. Excuse my language. I was lied to by a man promised me wealth, happiness and love. I took an educated, strong black woman across the sea and reduced me to this. And so when I reduced his skull to white matter, everything just seemed better. <laughs> oh, but maybe I wasn't cleaning enough. Maybe I wasn't cooking enough. Maybe I wasn't having enough sex to satisfy him. I thought of every excuse possible to make up for his lack of commitment. His fear of truly honouring me as his wife. I had um, brave mistresses call my phone and shower me with abuse. I had women just snigger at me on the street. So do I regret what I done? Hmm. 
No. Time to breathe. Makes me feel fine. Blowing through the jasmines in my mind. I knock on your door and this wind like punches into me and it sounds cliche but I feel like I kind of can't breathe but I suck it up and the door swings open with a kiss on each cheek it smells like spice and heat it's all up in the air we sit talk I don't understand your jokes but I do love your accent you throw in a bleh or a bleh la in between your sentences and I don't know why, but I love that more. You ask me how my day was. I lie. You ask me if my uni applications are going well. I lie. You're satisfied. You tell me stories about your day. You didn't like what some of the men were saying down at the mosque last Friday. Too much judgment, not enough democracy. And I feel like I could be at home now. A proper Algerian, maybe. You pass the Zalabia and I'll pull the Selecto. You kick off your sandals and we rest our feet on the sanded table. Your hair's grey. I could dye it for you. Yeah, I'm hungry. You'll get me some bread, rip the crust off, eat with your hands. We laugh together. Same beat. But then, the clock strikes and I feel like this part of Nick Cinderella no producer ever wanted. You say, it's late, time to go home. And that last word lingers, spice and heat. You ask me if I'd actually like to stay and you might as well be speaking another language. I say, nah, that's all right. I need to get up early, another lie. I shove my trainers on and you tell me you like them. I guess we all learn to adapt. The door swings open. Spice and heat kiss on each cheek. Yeah, see you soon. You say, text me that you're a safe, huh? Yeah, I will. Okay. Bye. I love you. And that's it. Why are you even watching me? What do you care what I do with Alina's ponytail? You're not my girlfriend. You had your chance a year ago and you blew it. And don't try and pretend like you were drunk because the things that you said were cold and small and cruel and unforgivable. That night at the Premier Inn was really important to me. I wanted it to be special and it took a lot of planning on my behalf. I was vulnerable and you knew that. It might not have been your first time, but it was mine and I wanted it to be nice. And you ruined it. I had to borrow money from my dad. I had to pay almost £300 to fix the ozonator because the rose petals got stuck in the filter of the jacuzzi. I had to borrow money from my dad. You try lying to your dad about being alone in a Premier Inn on a Tuesday night in a jacuzzi filled with rose petals. <laughs> I mean, he still won't look at me. That doesn't matter anymore. I'm happy now. Now I'm finally happy and I don't think about you anymore. I feel good about myself and, and I aced my A-levels and 
I'm happy and and now now you want to act like you're the scorned woman like you're Nastasia Filipovna from that stupid Dostoevsky novel look if you think you're going to bring your jealousy and your misplaced romantic aspirations back into my life you're dead wrong you're not ruining my final year Beth Seven years ago, my sister Mefuza and I went out to use the phone um, to call for flowers. It, it was my mother's birthday and uh, her favourites were, um, they, they were mimosa, the small yellow flowers with thin stalks. I was standing on this corner to make sure my mother didn't see us use the phone and um, <laughs> Mefuza was older than I was but she was, she was standing on her tiptoes to put the coins in and dial the number. Suddenly they were there. There were three of them, these tall, uh, fast boys who moved quick and, and one of them had a can and he was circling this phone booth, he was wetting it like a dog and, and another one wet something against the door so my sister couldn't get out and the third boy, I remember he was laughing but, but, but his laugh was strange, it was like, it was like crying and he laid broken bits of wood against the door of the booth and he lit the match. Suddenly it felt like the glass of that phone booth had started to burn even though that doesn't make any sense and <laughs> my freezer's mouth was open like so open but no sound the neighbours got her out in time what does that even mean? In time. In time for what? No, there's nothing wrong with her body, but she doesn't walk. There's nothing wrong with her mouth, but she doesn't speak. I look at her and I think, she is my England. She is my England. But I say no. I say no. Not for me. Not that for me. For my Frieza, perhaps but not for me. Because this is it, isn't it? Right here, under our feet. It scared me that I didn't know what was coming in my life. I always thought, what if I make the wrong move, you know? But maybe there isn't any right move. I was trying to figure it all out, but maybe you can't. Look at us, we all dress the same, we all watch the same TV. No one's really different, even if they think they're different. And that makes me free, because I can do anything if I really don't care what the result is. I don't need money. I don't even need a future. You know, I could knock out all my teeth with a hammer. So what? I could poke my eyes out. I'll still be alive. You know, I could strip naked and fart in the wind. At least I would know I was doing something real for two or three seconds. It's all about fear, and I'm not afraid anymore. It is night on the planet Earth, and I am alive. Someday I'll be dead. Someday I'll be bones in a box, but right now, I'm not. And anything is possible. That's why I'm going to New York with Seuss. Because each moment can be what it is. I'm going on the train there. I'm living there. I'm reading the newspaper. There is no failure and there is no mistake. And whatever happens, happens. So at this moment, I'm not afraid. Fuck fear. Fuck money. I'm gonna go to New York and I will live on the streets. I will sing with the bums. I will starve, but I will not die. I will live. I fantasised about this. Meeting you. Or on the tube, usually. That's, that's where I imagine it happening. Uh, on the Northern Line, somewhere around Camden. You get on. I'm already there. Um, you're with Jack. You've, you've got bags. You've been shopping. And, and you're laughing. 
And then a woman offers to swap seats with you so you can sit next to each other because you so clearly want to. And then Jack sees me. <laughs> he stops laughing. He nudges you and whispers in your ear and the laughter just goes from your eyes. <laughs> and then we're just sat there staring at each other. The three of us. Every day I sit on the tube with my eyes closed for fear that it'll happen. Only I, I half want it to happen. I wait for it to happen. The point is, it wasn't meant to happen till I was ready. Looking terrific and everything in my life would be great. And my, and my eyes wouldn't ache and my face wouldn't be puffy and I'd know where I was going because there would be somewhere I needed to be. And you would envy me. And Jack, if he was with you, he'd be sorry. So bloody sorry that he ever swapped me for you. And, and you'd be fat. And, and you're not. But you should be. Anyway, this isn't, this isn't what I had in mind. None of this is what I had in mind. But you've got him. You've won. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here, where Juliet lives, and every cat, and dog, and little mouse, every unworthy thing, live here in heaven, and may look on her. But Romeo may not. More validity more honourable state, more courtship lives in carry on flies than Romeo. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and festal modesty still blush as thinking their own kiss is sin. Romeo may not. He is banished. Flies may do this, but I from this must fly. They are free men, but I am banished. And say so yet that exile is not death. As thou know, Poison mixed, no sharp ground knife, no sun mean of death. Though ne'er so mean, but banished to kill me. Banished. Oh, friar, the damned use that word in hell. Howling attends it. How is all the heart? Being a divine. A ghostly confessor, a sin absolver. And my friend professed to mangle me with that word. Banished. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, that's completely fine then. You obviously loved her very much. It's just that in that specific moment, ejaculating was a little bit more important to you than her sanity and well-being. And now this is happening. A chain of events which is going to accumulate in the miracle of childbirth and it's going to grow up and behave like you. Give me your phone, I want to talk to her. I want to apologise to her. 
when we had sex I thought about how sad you seemed how lonely and how desperate and and how much you missed me and how much I missed you and how horrific this two-dimensional idiot fiance of yours is but I I bet she's lovely I bet she's just extremely nice so give me your phone I want to talk to her this day this day this fucking wedding day she's had plans and she put a napkin on a barbie and now here I am my fucking belly swelling by the minute to evidence that her entire world is shit she'll probably off herself be one of those people underneath the train one of those station announcements I would I fucking would. I'd open up every vein on my body and write on the wall big and red. This is not a cry for help, so give me your phone. I used to be a good person, a good person, and, and now, now I am evil, <laughs> I am actually evil, so, so please, please give me your phone. Sweet mistress, what your name is else, I know not, nor by what wonder you do hit of mine. Less in your knowledge and your grace, you show not than our earth's wonder, more than earth divine. Teach me, dear creature, how to think and speak. Lay open to my earthy gross conceits, mothered in errors, feeble, shallow and, and weak. The folded meaning of your words deceit. Against my soul's pure truth, why labour you to make it wonder in an unknown field? Are you a god? Would you create me new? Transform me then, and to your power I'll yield. But if that I am I, then well I know your weeping sister is no wife of mine, nor to her bed, no homage do I owe. Far more, far more to you do I decline. Oh, train me not with thy notes, sweet mermaid, to drown in thy sister's flood of tears. Sing, siren, for thyself, and I will dote. Spread over the silver waves thy golden hairs, and as a bed, I'll take them, and there lie. And in that glorious supposition think he gains, by death that have such means to die. Let love be in light. Now, the thing that you find so cruel is the self-same process of selection that I and my group go through every day of our lives. In admittance to school, in our tests, in our class ranking. Is it unfair? If it is fair, even if it's unfortunate but necessary for us, then, by God, so it must be for you. You write of your responsibility to the young. Treat us with respect, and that will show you your responsibility. You write that education is just hazing. But we worked to get to this school, and some of us overcame prejudices. Economic, sexual, you can't even begin to imagine to get admittance here. To pursue that same dream of security you pursue. We who are at any moment in danger of being deprived of it. By the administration, by teachers, by you. By, say, one low grade that keeps us out of graduate school. By one say, one capricious or inventive answers on our parts which perhaps you don't find amusing. Now you know, do you see? What 
it is to be the subject of that power. My charges are not trivial. You see, in haste, I think, with which they were accepted. The joke you have said with the sexist tinge, your verbal or physical caress. I know, I know, you say that it is meaningless. I understand. I defer from you. To lay a hand on someone's shoulder. You fool. Who do you think I am? To come here and to be taken in by a smile. You think I want revenge. I don't want revenge. I want understanding. So she's getting closer and she's talking to all the students that are like head of the union and have done well or whatever. But then we're there at the end of that line and still no one has noticed us. And you just realise, yeah, when she's this close up, what performance it all is like. How she stands, how she even holds her head. It's all so deliberate. Well, it just makes us sort of shrink. <laughs> and she shakes someone's hand and they fucking curtsy, like... But she's getting closer and that's when I realised that all the stuff we've talked about for nights and nights and months at the pub, the need for real change, for the patriarchy to be dismantled, for the country to actually be fair. I realised that there's only one today between all these hundreds of people that genuinely believes she has a duty to speak truth to power. I'm the only fucking one, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so now's the moment. Do I believe the shit I've been talking or do I not? But before I can even answer that, she's there. Teresa. And I'll be fucked if I'm not going to say what I think. So I say, Prime Minister, do you have any idea of what you've done to this country? To almost every aspect of it? From the policies of austerity that you were all warned would result in hundreds of deaths. To Windrush. To Universal Credit. And she's looking at me and I'm talking, but... Then my stomach is doing this, um... This weird thing of, like, convulsing and stopping me speaking. And my lip tenses in the way it does when I'm going to cry and... My voice is just gone and my face is red and... She looks at me, this fucking antichrist robot woman, and she steps towards me and she just says, Are you okay? Are you alright? She puts her hand on me. She puts her Tory right hand on my pure left arm, and I pull it away and run and go before anyone can even. Go back to my room. I don't want to talk to anyone, I don't, I don't want to see anyone. Because I know I'll be on the news, on social media, everywhere, forever. The little girl that tried to take on the Prime Minister but was such a fucking snowflake that she couldn't even finish a sentence without bursting into tears. And she, that right-wing robot dancing thing, will get points from the fact that she was compassionate. Are you okay? And that's basically my life over. A face I know. As the knife reaches its hilt in his flesh, his blue eyes open wide and connect with mine. As I start to pull the knife out, time stops. Life replays. I see him as I saw him last, red-faced and shouting, waving arms as the boat speeds away. I pull the knife out a little more and I'm back roaming the streets. Nat gone. Wondering how I'll go on without him. Frantic messages and calls from him. Missing school, because I can. Doing errands for the North Sea gang who take me under their wing. Feed me, call me the boy. 
another inch out and I am back in training. Four hours sleep a night, sweat, hunger, camaraderie. I take no more calls from that. I tell him I have no brother now. Although I do, I have thousands. Another inch and government forces storm our base. I watch chests explode and faces blown off. I dodge bullets. I try and fire my gun, but my hand shakes and somehow I escape. I'm out on the street and my brain can't control my feet and I just run. I run and I run through back of my hand streets, leaving my North Sea brothers to their defeat. A coward. Within minutes, I'm here. Because even though everything I love is gone, I feel safe. Behind these walls. The knife is fully out and it's, it's my brother that falls. I met this guy four nights ago and he was the most beautiful boy that I have ever seen. We met in this club and he was dancing with his shirt off and I just thought, you know, wow, that guy can really dance. Like that guy, he, he's like fire. And then he looks at me, me, and I'm gone. You know, I try not to be. I try to make it seem like I'm not interested, but I am so interested. And then we dance until the sun comes up. And when he kisses me, I want to cry because I have never been kissed like that. I'm not back in Halifax. I have never been kissed how he kisses me or touched. Quite like that. Three days. Three days we stayed in bed and then we made love and it is so sweet and so tender. And then I start thinking, you know, ooh, is this it? You know? Is this what falling in love is. And then when I wake up in the morning, he's gone. Along with 400 euros from my wallet, my iPad, my camera, my favourite scarf, and a large piece of my heart. So I go out and I walk through those streets of Berlin and I feel small and I want to cry. But I don't. Well, I do a bit, but not as much as I want to. Because I want my dad. And I want my mum. But I can't think about them because then my chest will explode. So, to literally stop myself falling apart, I just have to breathe. God, I am so stupid. Danny, please. I, I know I fucked up, Danny. I know I did. I, I mean, you, you said it, and, and I just... I just panicked. But then, as soon as I was on the other side of the door, honestly, I was like, Luke, you absolute idiot. What are you doing? Get back in there. Hug him. But I was scared I'd get it wrong. Say the wrong things, because I, I didn't know what to say. So I didn't. But, but I wish I had done. I, I really wish I'd done so. No, I just thought... Today, and I just wanted to check really, and it, it's okay to say no, but I just wondered if we could maybe sort of, yeah, have another go. Because, yeah, I, 
I, I love that to be honest. Don't say no just yet, not yet, just there's some stuff that I should have said ages ago, but but I just didn't. So um yeah. You are the most beautiful thing I've seen in any of trackies. When you're there, I just want to shout, my life is boring, please be in it. And it probably sounds weird, but you smell immense. And there's particles of you up my nose, which is, which is a bit like having sex, maybe. I, I, I don't know. Like, you know when you just fancy someone so much, you could just, just vomit. Just throw your whole life up in front of them, like, have it, please, let's go on adventures. You can meet my nan. It's like that. It's a bit like having a stroke, in a good way, like like heart and head and, you know, limbs. When you leave, I'm just numb. I want to wear your jumpers. I, I, I doubt they fit, but honestly, Danny, there's no one in this world I'd rather put a condom on but you. You got ripped extra safe pineapple I'd open up my heart for you I'd hand it to you and say do with it what you will I'd do anything that you wanted any time I'll be there for you hold you help you cradle you could love you. I could love you in a way that you never believed possible. Because I think that you're extraordinary. You elevate me. I sometimes want to tear out my heart and carve out the words I love. Everything about you. It screams to me the words beautiful. I like the way that you look down. And I lose eye contact with you for a second. And you just look back up. And I'm just knocked out by how beautiful you are all over again. I like the way that you walk. You've got a bit of a tomboy in you. And <laughs> you just bounce around with such enthusiasm for everything. You're so open. And just perfect. See, you read it, Marianne. You read what I wrote to you. Believe me, Marianne, I could make you so happy. And he doesn't deserve you. You don't deserve it. Let me love you. Because I don't care if you break my heart. I'm willing to take the chance. I will take that risk because I want to be with you. I want to be with you more than you could possibly imagine. I hang up and I get out of the car because I can hardly breathe, but then I'm just standing at the edge of the motorway and I don't know whether to turn back or just keep going. I feel like I'm somewhere between who I was and who I'm going to be, but all I can think is that I want my dad. I want my sisters and my brother and my mum. I want my mum. But I can't think of her or of them, not now, because if I do, my chest is just going to explode. I feel like I'm literally going to fall to pieces, that my arms will drop off and then my legs and then my head. And so, and so to stop myself from just falling apart, I make a list of, of all the things that I can think that, that I know to be true, because because I know that having my heart broken by a boy from Spain is not the worst thing that will ever happen to me. And, 
And I know that things can't stay the same even when we want them to. And I know that people aren't perfect. Even the people we love. God, especially the people we love. And then I know that in the end love isn't enough, that it, it can't that it can't save them. And I know what grief tastes like because it's bitter. And I know what it sounds like because it's just so loud. But I know that, I know that when my mum died, my childhood was just over. And I know that the seasons will keep going, that spring will turn to summer and summer to autumn and autumn to winter and winter to spring and spring back to summer because it goes on. All of it, life, it just, it goes on.